If you missed part one of this series, we just started last week. You can catch it online. That was unmasking my emotional wounds, unmasking my emotional wounds, and a very important key message within the series as we continue this journey of, of what's behind the mask. Today is another serious topic. It is, and it's in, in to let me kick it off again, let me go to our, our verse, our theme verse for the series, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, that basically says, it's a declaration that I want us to kind of make to get together with Paul. He says, we refuse to wear masks. That's it. I'm done with it. I'm tired of wearing it. I'm tired of covering it up. I just refuse to live that way anymore. I'm not going to buy into the lie like the mask is better. It's not. I refuse to cover it up any longer, no more, no more is going to happen. And I refuse to play games. We don't maneuver and manipulate behind the scenes. Rather, here's what we need to do. We need to keep everything we do and say out in the open. He says the whole truth on display, which, which some of us do. Some of us do that, but, but some don't. And, and can I just tell you, I'll be real honest, man. This is the reason why I want to do this series, because it's very easy to hide in church. I mean, religious people are really good at, at wearing that mask. Christians are really good. I'm a Christian. I speak to myself here, okay? We're really good at wearing the mask. Because why? Because we feel like there's, there's this tremendous pressure for some Christians to be perfect, to have it all together, to, to have the answers, or at least to, to, to make it look like we, there's a pressure on us, and, and who knows, I don't know if it was where the pressure is coming from, man, we don't have a religious environment here, but, but we tend to just buy into this lie that we need to be perfect, or at least we need to act like we have it going on, so we tend to mask things and, 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 and cover them up, and today we're going to talk about what I'm calling the dark side. The dark side. How many Star Wars fans in here? Come on, who's my fellow nerds? Just be me. Admit it. Let's go. Come on. I love it. Star Wars is awesome. I don't care what you guys say. There's only a few of you. Man, we're going to have to convert you to the dark. No, I'm kidding. But, but this is, the dark side is, is, is something I believe that every single one of us has. There is every one of us, listen, every one of us has an area in our life that we wish wasn't there. Every one of us has an area of our life that, that we, are, we, we are trying very, some of us are trying very, very hard to keep it covered up. And it's, and it's, just, that, it's just that area that, that we wish no one would ever find out. And, and uh, some of us were afraid. There's a lot of fear associated with the dark side. There is, because it's the fear of exposure. It's the fear of what if people find this out. It's the fear of like, man, if, if they find this out, then, man, I'm not going to get the help. I'm not going to get help if I find, find this out. I'm not going to, I'm going to get fired. You know, if, if someone finds out what I'm, what I'm doing here behind the scenes, I'm not going to get help. I'm going to get, I'm going to lose my family. If, if someone knows really what I'm, what I'm covering up here, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get saved. I'm not going to get rescued here. I'm just, I'm going to lose respect. I'm going to lose status or lose position. I mean, it's just bad news. If people knew this, whatever that area is today. And I just want to give you some hope today, you guys, that we don't serve a God that just wants to kind of expose you. That just want, he, we don't, no, no. God is not here today pointing an accusing finger at anybody. He, he's not. He doesn't, he doesn't stand up here pointing a finger. He, he, we serve a God who, who, who actually does not, like, he came, God, God actually came to earth not to point a finger at you, not because he's mad at you, not to you know, get, in, get you in court and slam the gavel down on you and tell you how guilty you are. No, he came on a rescue plan to set you free. Okay, So he's not, he, God is not, in, not the one who's condemning and pointing a finger at you. He is someone who's pointing a way towards freedom. Okay, There's freedom in the name of Jesus. This is going to be a difficult message, though. It is. And I would again ask you in this series to, to be brave enough to just go on the journey with me, you know, and don't check out and don't put up the walls and, and let's, just, let's just see what God's word has. And this is a, it is a difficult message, though. I'm just going to tell you up front. Okay, it was even for, Jesus even said in John 3, verse 20, he says this, everyone who does evil hates the light. Like when you're doing things you know you shouldn't do, this is the last kind of message you want to hear. You're like, you don't want the light. You know what I'm saying? You're like, no, turn the light off. It just, 
that I don't want to go there, Pastor. I'm not ready to go there, but I believe God has you here for a purpose, that, that maybe, maybe it is time. Maybe, just maybe it is time to get your freedom. Maybe it is time to take that mask off and to let God do what he's been wanting to do for a long time in your life, in your heart. And, and I believe some of us are just, de- we're desperately trying to hide this thing. We're spending a lot of energy in the process of just masking it instead of energy to be free of it. And this true, this is true. This whole mask process is true of all sin, of all temptation, all every, every area of dark side, every dark side, which by the way, again, every one of us has a dark side. I want to say myself included. Like we, like we have issues. Okay. Every single one of us has issues. There ain't no one here that is perfect. Not a single one of us. Okay. We're all in the same hospital here receiving healing from the same issues. Can I get an amen? Okay. So that's, that's just, just know that. But I mean, can I, I don't want a single out something. This message isn't about one particular temptation or one particular, you know, dark side, but I, I, I just, I feel like I do. I need, I need to mention about sexual sin because if there's an area that is so, that is secret, that, that is, that is shrouded in secrecy and, and behind the mask is, is this area of sexual sin. And, and if you have, um, you know, this is, this is, this is a message for sixth grade and up. Let me say it that way. Your sixth grader is here. I want them here. If they're under sixth grade, it's up to you, mom or dad, because we're going we're gonna to talk about some, some stuff here today. There, we, we are. Because we, I, I feel like we need to. I feel like we need to address some things, you guys. Um, the enemy has succeeded in making sexual sin so much more available today. What used to take like a drive to the magazine rack or to the video store, now you get at the click of a button. Now you get, it, it goes with you everywhere on the phone. It, it is just, he has succeeded in making it over the last 20 years, just made it so readily available. There, there is, statistically, there is 40 million Americans. There's only 300 million, okay, America. There are 40 million of them are regular visitors to pornography. Regular visitors to pornography. The, the porn industry, the revenue of the porn industry is, is actually the, the Major League Baseball, NFL and NBA, it, it makes more money combined than those three agencies. So this is, this is a huge enterprise. It's a big deal, you guys. Parents, listen to this statistic. 90%, that's 9 out of 10 in America, they say, of 8 to 16-year-olds are viewing pornography online. Most of which, obviously, the parents have no clue. It's happening. One third of, of pornographic viewers online are women. So this isn't just like a man issue. Um, so we're going to expose behind the mask here, not just the sexual sin, but, but the dark side, okay? My, my job here today and through this series is to show you what's behind the mask, what's really going on behind that mask. And I want you to take some notes with me because there is, there is a progression to the mask. If we get trapped, to get trapped into covering up the temptation or the dark side, there is a, a, a usual progression that happens for us to kind of wear the mask. And, I, and I, I like to share with you the progression sometimes because I feel like if I can share with you how the enemy schemes and the way he operates to try to tempt you and to get you trapped, then, then you can kind of cut him off. You can say, no, 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 I see what he's doing and I got a plan, okay? So write these down. Here it is. This is very key because the enemy's job, the enemy's job, number one, is to first provide you. Here's the first step. He provides you with an opportunity, an opportunity. That's what he's working on. Like right now, the devil is working. The Bible says that he is crafty. You know that? That he's scheming. That he's at the drawing board. He is a master. You know the devil is a master fisherman. He is. He's a master fisherman. He knows what lure to use. He knows what bait to use for you. See, for some of you, it's not, it may not be the lust thing, but for others, it may be money. It may be, it, it may be something else. It may be, it may be a different addiction, a different hobby, something that you're you're just allowing control your life that you're covering up and has way too much control and ownership, it's actually calling the shots, okay? The enemy knows what bait to use, and he's, he's drawing it up. You think that that's random, like, oh, man, it just kind of, these things keep happening. Man I keep, man, I keep getting tempted, and this keeps coming up into my life. That's not random. That's the enemy schemes. He's scheming. Look what the Bible says in Genesis 4, 7. It says, sin is crouching where? 
at your door. So it's right there all the time. And you know this. We know this is true. It's right there. We really have the opportunity. Here it is. And the desi- it desires to have you, but you must master it. So the first thing I want you to know is don't be naive. Don't be naive. Don't, don't think for a second longer that this message is not for you. All right, sir, ma'am, do, don't think that you're above this, that this message is not for you, like, like you can check out on me now because this relates to every single one of us that there is a dark side, there is an enemy who is setting a trap for you even as we speak, he is setting the bait, okay? So don't be naive, don't act like it's not happening, okay? That's part of the mask. And parents, can I say this? Parents, stop being naive like your kid's the one out of the 10, all right? You just, it's, it's, it's out there. Don't be, don't be naive to this, you guys. The enemy is creating opportunities, and he's creating even more in this generation, and it's his job to do it. That's what he's, and he's, and by the way, I can't stop that. I can't stop the enemy from the, the you know, giving the opportunity. And by the way, that's not even the goal. The goal is not to stop the opportunity. The goal is to withstand the evil schemes of the enemy in the middle of the fight. It's actually to have a plan when it does happen. That's the goal. It's how am I going to respond when the enemy is coming my way? That's the, that's the goal. So the first, first step is we have an opportunity. And then usually the entry point when an opportunity arises, most of all sin takes place in the eyes. It starts there. Write it down this way. We take a look. You take a look. Oh, I see that. I see that. You just, you just look and we, we, we let it come into the windows of our soul. That's what your eyes are. I truly believe that if, if, we, if we could guard the eye gate, then, then I really believe that we could, we could just get rid of over 90% of the sin that we commit. That if you, were just to, if you were just to watch what you're looking at and be careful to guard your eyes, man, this, this is where most of the sin comes through. This is where the enemy gets you. It's through your eyes. It's, the, it's one of the gates to your soul. There was this one smart guy, he told the, he, he told the pastor, um, pastor, I, I, that it sounds, you're right, you know, don't look, okay? We, can't, we, we take a look, but man, in the world we're living in today, like, Pastor, that's impossible. It is everywhere, everywhere I go. I would have to be blindfolded to, to, to obey this, to not take a look. And the pastor said, it's not the first look that gets you. It's every look after that. See, it's a second look that'll grab you. So sometime later, the, the, the pastor sees the guy and he says, hey, hey, man, how, how are your eyes doing? And he knew what he was talking about. How are your eyes doing? He said, oh, Pastor, I took your advice, man. I, I'm not giving the enemy any room. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not taking a second look anymore. I just keep looking the first time. <laughs> you guys look like you needed a laugh right there. You guys, you guys were sweating and pale and stuff, so there you go. James chapter 1, verse 14. It says, each one is tempted when by his own evil desires. See, the enemy uses your own evil desires. You're dragged away and entice. Look here, not in your notes, up here on the screen, Matthew chapter 6, Jesus talking about the eyes here. Talking about, he says, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is good, if what you're looking at, you're hearing me, if what, if what you're seeing in your eyes, if it's good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye, if what you're seeing is bad, and you're thinking, no, no, no I, I know what you're thinking, I, but I'm, it doesn't affect me that way, pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm more mature. I can watch certain things. I can look at certain things. He says, if what your eye is seeing is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then that light within you, like you think that there's light in you, but you're looking at the wrong stuff, if that light within you is darkness, you are so deceived. He says, how great is that darkness? You're walking around thinking you're in the light, and you got darkness in you because you let it in. You let it in. We're talking about the dark side. It begins with an opportunity. We, we, we start to entertain it. We just, we take a look. And then what happens next, before I give you the blank, I want you to put an asterisk by number three right there because this is where I believe that we need to stop the enemy in his tracks right here, okay? Because you cannot stop the opportunity and you cannot walk through life blindfolded. But if you can stop it right here, you don't get to four or five. 
you don't continue down this progression that I'm going to give you, okay? And that is, write it down this way, we begin to reason. Yeah, you, you, start, to, you start to think of things. Well, well, I wonder if it would really hurt me that much. Well, I wonder if it's really that bad. Well, I, I wonder if I'll get caught. I wonder if I'll, if I'll, if I'll get away with it. I, or, 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 you know what, I... I wonder if, I mean, God really knows how hard this is for me. I mean, maybe he's okay with it. I mean, I mean or, or, or you know what? It doesn't affect me like it does most other people. It doesn't affect me like that. We just begin to reason, or like this one, a lot of young people say this one, everybody's doing it. I mean, well, everybody's, everybody's doing it. So, so I guess I, I, I can do it because everybody's, you know, it's, it's not just me. And we begin to reason. We start thinking, maybe it's okay. And we fall into Satan's ultimate plan and his trap. John 8, says, when Satan lies, and he's doing it all the time. You know what? He's doing it right now. He is still lying. Like, he never stops lying. Right now, he's still telling you lies. I just rebuke the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. I cast down those lies right now that are coming against you even now. The Satan, look, when he lies, it says he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. He'll tell you things like, no, 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 you'll be happier. Yeah, no, you, your, your kids will be better off without, no. You, you, oh, that's not your soulmate. That's not your soulmate. Your soulmate's over, over here. No, that's not that bad. Man, every, it's natural. It's natural. You could do that. You could do that. It's just natural. Just satisfy that. It's natural. Everybody, and he, he, I'm telling you, he will, and what happens here in this stage, we become so confused when we begin to reason with it. Truth becomes relative, and, and, and our feelings start to take control. If, if it feels good, I, I mean, I can, I can do it. It must be good. I mean, if we don't stop it here, if it doesn't stop here, it's going it, to progress. You're, you're, now, you're now catching momentum downhill, downhill. It's hard to stop it after this, after it takes root. Here's, here's the next is that is we take a step. We just, we just you know, we, we act on it. We click that button on the mouse. We stay over the night with that person that you're seeing. We, we look, you know, we, we, you guys, we, we've all, and we've all taken the step. We've all taken that misstep. We've all kind of, you know, you know done that, you know, said that, whatever it is, um, every one of us have done that, and every one of us knows what happens next when you do that, don't you? Don't you feel terrible inside? When, you, when, when that dark side comes and you give in to it, it just gives you, it gives you this, this, this ugly feeling. I call it the nasty, right? It just gives you the, a, a case of the nasties. It's just like, oh, gosh, I feel, I feel gross inside. It's this, man, why? It's, it's you're living out literally what James is talking about in James chapter 1, verse 15. It says, then, after that desire has conceived, you reasoned with it, and you kept reasoning with it. It actually gives birth to sin. That's the click. That's what we did. I mean, we did it. We drank it. We smoked it. We slept with it. We, we, we acted on it. We, we, we did it. It gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to the nasty, okay? It gives birth to death. And this isn't just talking about physical death. It's talking about an emotional death, a spiritual death. It's, it's like what, when, we, when we did it, we took the step, what happened was we started dying on the inside. That's what you're feeling. That's what we're feeling when we take the step, a process. It's just a death process process starts to take place inside of our heart, inside of our soul, that sick feeling on the in, inside of us. And then we end up in something that I call the sin cycle. Write it down this way. We just start the cycle. It's the sin cycle, man. And, and, and see if this, here's, here's what the cycle looks like. See if this sounds familiar to you because you did it. You know what I mean? You did it. You took the step. You did it. And, and you felt bad about it. And then you come into like an environment like this, like church or something. And you hear, I mean, powerful worship, you get in God's presence. And you hear a message, and, and, and you, just got, you just have a God encounter. And God meets you right there, and you, and you know it. You have this, and you say, God, I don't, I don't, God, forgive me. I don't want to do this. I don't want to. I don't want to take that step. I don't want to keep messing with this. God, forgive me, and God forgives you, and you sense him. Man, and it's beautiful, and you don't even make it to Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. And, and, and it happens again, and you start the cycle. Then you come back into 
something like this or somewhere in God's presence. And, and, and again, there's, there's, there he is. He meets you right there. And you say, oh, man, I did it again. Man, forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. And, and, and he does. He'll meet you right there. But then again, you don't make it to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and it happens again, and we start the cycle. But listen, every time, every time we go through the cycle, we become a little bit more immune. Immune to God and immune to the sin. You see, the repentance gets a little bit easier. It gets, the repentance gets a little bit softer every time we start the cycle. And the sin gets a little bit easier. The cycle, the cycle continues, and it happens to all of us, you guys. Even the great apostle Paul had, this, had the same cycle going on. He talks about it in Romans chapter 7. He says, Paul, this the two-thirds of the New Testament, Apostle Paul, okay? Here's what he says. For I have the desire to do what's good, but I cannot carry it out. I mean, I want to do what is right, but I can't do it. I can't carry it out. He says, for what I do isn't the good I want to do. No, it's the evil I don't want to do that. I keep on doing. And, and if that's you, I just want you to know you're not alone. You are not alone in this cycle, all right? And, and, and I think the greatest tragedy sometimes is for a pastor to, to talk to you like, like from on a stage like this or someone sitting next to you, a friend or someone, to, to act like this isn't them and to say, oh, that's not my problem. Shame on you. This is one of the biggest tragedies for a pastor to come up or for a preacher to just ask, hey, why don't you guys do it like I do it? You know, do it like, I mean, I got it figured out. Do it like, that's just a tragedy. And I'm telling you guys, we're in the same hospital. The enemy is crafty and scheming against every single one of us. None of us are exempt from this battle of the dark side that continues to try to trap us up. And man, I tell you, I just... I've dreamt of a church, and I'm seeing it now, of a church that is, that's not afraid to just take off the mass, and, and we're acting like we got it going on, and really we have this area we struggle with, this dark side. It really, it, it, I dreamt of a place where really there's not a fear of, there's no fear of exposure. Instead, there's a guarantee of freedom. And that's, that's what you need to realize today, that there's not really what you're battling with here. What the enemy has convinced you of is that there is a fear of of exposure, but really there's a guarantee of freedom when you step out and take off the mask. And I just want you to read, if you'll turn the page over here in your notes, up here on the screens as well, I want you to read this first phrase of this scripture, 1 John chapter 5. Everybody read it aloud, full voices. One, two, three. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. God is light. See, that's God, God does not want to, he's not here to hurt you. God just wants to shine some light on you. God just wants to bring some light into our lives that sometimes can get so dark. He really just wants to bring light. He goes on to say that if we claim to be without sin, in other words, if we say, this doesn't affect me, and we put on that mask, he says, we're just deceiving ourselves and the truth isn't in us. But if we confess our sins, if we remove the masks, he says, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. But again, if we put back on that mask, if we claim we have not sinned, I'm okay. Yeah, no, no. Praise God. I'm with you, Pastor. Yeah. We make him, him God, out to be a liar. And his word has no place in our lives. So I would say to you this. The worst, I would say that the worst thing is not the sin. The worst thing you can do is not the sin. The worst thing you can do is play the game and put on the mask. Are you hearing me today? See, God knows that you have a dark side. God knows you have issues. He knows you have sin. That's not actually the worst thing you can do. You know why? Because he already made a way for you to be free, clean, and redeemed from it. That's not the worst thing you can do. The worst thing you can actually do is cover it up and pretend it's not there and not receive the redemption that was paid for you. That's the worst thing you can do is play the game, mask it up, and pretend that it's not, it's not there. I want to give you some things today. I want to give you some very practical things that you can do. If you're tired 
of that nasty feeling, if you're tired of wearing the mask, if you're tired of playing the game, if you're just tired of all that and you want to experience true freedom once and for all, let me give you some practical advice from the Word of God today on how, look, now that you take off the mask, let's do some things. Here's number one. And this first one, by the way, before you put it up on the screen, this first one can save your life. It is a word from God, a prophetic word for some of you today. This first one is just one word, okay? Here it is. Put it up. Run! <laughs> okay. Did someone, did you hear that? Someone prophetically hear that today? Run! Get out of there! Just, just don't, don't entertain it. Don't, don't, don't play with it. Don't stare at it. Don't look at it. Just get out of there. Run, Forrest, run! Okay? Flee. Get out of there. That's what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.22. Flee, the, the New Living Translation actually says run. That's what that means. Run the evil desires of your youth and pursue something else. Okay, check it out. Listen, that you're not just supposed to run from the temptation. Don't just run from the sin or else you'll be running from sin your whole life. You'll be running from things and the dark side your whole life. No, no, no. Don't just run from it, but you need to replace it, okay? So not only run, don't run just from sin, but start to run towards something else. He says run towards, pursue righteousness, run towards faith, start running towards love, pursue God. We need to get out as fast as you can. Some of you in here today, are you hearing me? Some of you need to run. I'm telling you, I, I, as your pastor who loves you, I just want to belabor this just a moment, Okay? That if you are today, you find yourself in a compromising situation. If today you find yourself in a, in, in a situation where it has gone too far. You've entertained that conversation too long. That, that those batting eyes or that gentle touch. Or, or you should have ended that conversation a long time ago and it kept going. And it's actually, it's, it's actually grown to to different places, if you just, just entertain some things a bit too much, please run. Just get out of there. Um, delete the number. You know, block the number. Change jobs if you have to. Your soul is more important to God than your career. Than, than your family is more important than the money you could be making. Just run. Get out of there and get out as fast as you can. Um, some of you maybe need to talk to your spouse today. Some of you just may, it, I know it sounds, it's, it's, it's hard, but part of this running and pursuing the right, the right things and the right actions would be to actually open up. And, and, and the enemy will tell you, no, 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 don't do that. But, but it's going to bring you so much freedom. Some of you kids are in here today, and some of you kids need to actually um, open up. And talk to your parents. All right, some of you, some of you kids need to actually just you've you've entertained it a bit too much, it's gone a bit too far, and 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 you need to you need to let let your parents know they love you, and your soul is more important to God, kids. Your soul is more important to God, and I hope you're hearing that from a pastor, your pastor who loves you, and and and, and to know that your God loves you too. Run, get at that's step number one. That's just practical. Run. Here's number two. And that is be accountable. Be accountable. You have to initiate this. You have to find some people in your life who know what you're going through, who really know you and what you're going through. Listen, if you are the only person who knows your secrets, if you're the only person who knows your dark side, you are in big trouble, dude. You are in big trouble. If you are the only person who knows about that, man, you, you need some people who know what you're thinking who know your real feelings. You need some people. That's why we're so big on, and we believe that everybody needs to be committed to a small group. Okay, because you, you, I wouldn't even, I, you can't open up and let every, like 100, 200 people know. I would not encourage that, okay? I would not. You don't even need to let me know. I'm serious. What you need to do is just let a, a few people know. Open up and share. Build trust with some people and open up and let them in and be accountable. Why? Because Proverbs 28 says, he who conceals his sins, that's the mask. He who wears the mask does not prosper. But whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. And I'm telling you that the devil is going to tell you, that's not true. No, no, no. If you don't keep that mask on, you're, you're going to get hurt. They'll reject you. You'll get fired. 
you, you, you're going to end up with, and he, he will lie to you to keep this mask on because he knows that, that God can't heal what you don't reveal. That's how he's keeping you captive. You think it's, it's, it's the way to get by, but that's the captivity. You're captive to the mask. Amen, somebody? Here's the third one, and that is we need to take precautions. Precautions. That means like do some things in a pre, circle like pre, okay? Pre, that's in, that means do some things before the temptation. Like, like you got you to gotta think it through, have a plan, okay? Like cut it off at the pass. Don't wait till it comes and then try to react to it. No, no, no. Take some precautions. Like I said, one of them might be you need to get into a group. For some of you, you may need it. We have, we have what's called Celebrate Recovery here at Discovery. For some of you, you, that, if, if you, have, you need to walk this healing out, and it's a process where you need to, you need to walk it out, and you, you feel like you need to walk it out with some, with some people over the course of, of, of a year or something. You just need to, you need to walk out your healing. We have a recovery group for you. They meet every Friday night. We, we have groups for them as well during the week. They're actually at the tent right out here, specifically today for this message, because some of you need that. Some of you need to walk this out with people and actually get connected to, that might be one of your precautions. Go out there and sign up for a Celebrate Recovery group or sign up for a group in, in general. So I get asked sometimes, what are some precautions, Pastor, that, that you kind of take? Well, here's Proverbs 5.8. Look at this. Keep a path far from her, okay? Like, don't, don't play with it. Don't, don't, if you know it's a danger zone for you, why are you going there? Why are you entertaining it? Why are you looking at it? Get away as far as you can. Don't even go near the door of her house, okay? So what are some things that, that I do? I, uh, one thing that I do, some precaution that I take, is I, is I never consider myself above this. I never consider myself above temptation, Okay, like I, I've seen too many pastors fall from very high places. So I remind myself, but for the grace of God, there I go. There I go, but for the grace of God. And so I remind myself that, no, I, I need the grace of God. I need precautions in my life. I, I need to have those things. We need to have precautions. Like if I go on a, on a, here's another one. If I go on a business trip, I take someone with me. I don't travel alone. I'll go with me for accountability. If I'm meeting with a, with a, a female, if I need to have like a counseling session with a, another female, my door is open or someone is there. And if they're married and they're having marital problems and their husband isn't with them, I don't meet with them more than once. It's one time or else your husband needs to come back or else you need to meet. You need to meet. I'm getting attacked up here, devil. <laughs> Where you at, devil? I will stomp you out. I, I, I take, I, I'm not given any room for an emotional, you see what I'm saying? There's no, I, and it's not because, oh, I'm so weak and I'm so, no, it's because I'm human and I'm taking some precautions, okay? Because I don't want to get, I'm not, I'm going to head it off at the pass. You need to take some precautions. Another thing that I do is I like to rehearse in my mind some things that could happen. So I think about how I would grieve the Holy Spirit how I would grieve my, I break the heart of my wife that I have to stand before my children and tell them, your dad fell. That, that the work of God, that God has done, man, and everything I have, have done and accomplished and walk with God to get to this point would all be eradicated. It would evaporate. Should I fall? Should I take that, take that step? And I remind myself of this. I do. This is part of my precaution. I, I, I say, you know what? That's because the bait does not look as tempting when you know what's really behind it. What, what's the cost of this thing? It may look good for, oh, uh, but no, no, no. What's really the cost of this thing? That's part of the precautions I take. I just, I just think of it in my mind, what, what could happen? Um, I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of amens, but um, we need to take precautions. Here's the last one, and that is make Jesus the Lord of my life. Make Jesus the Lord of my life. You say, well, I did that one. Well, hold on. Like, we love Jesus as Savior, but he wants to be Lord. Because a lot of us, we don't want to go to hell. We don't want to go to hell, so I need a Savior. I need him to save me from hell. Okay, but Jesus wants to be so much more than your Savior. He wants to be the Lord of your life. And you have to make him the Lord. Of, you, have to, you have to choose that, okay? And, and today, you know what? You have a master, 
You have a Lord. There is a Lord of your life. Maybe it's you. Maybe it is your addiction, or maybe it is that dark side. There, there is something that is a there is something that has lordship over your life. It might be money, might be your stuff, might be whatever is in front of you. You have a master. The Bible says this in Romans 6. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. And do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God. Make him Lord. For sin shall not be your Lord, your master. Um, the enemy would have us believe, and, would, and he's even lying right now, it would have you believe that the ma- yeah, you need to wear the mask. The mask is what's protecting you. The mask is what's, what's keeping you protected. You need to be behind that. Okay, that's what the enemy is, is telling you, but, and, the, and he's trying to convince you things like of what people will say or what, even sometimes what God will say. Can I tell you something? Like, like you don't, you, what you need to do is take biblical precedent. What does the Bible say? That's what truth is. Not what the enemy is whispering in your ear even right now, but what does the word of God say? There's actually a, a story in John chapter 8 of a woman who was caught in adultery. She actually had her mask ripped off. She didn't take, off, take it off voluntarily. The, these religious leaders found this adulter, adulterous act happening right there, and they grab her out of that room. They throw her in the middle of the street at Jesus' feet. Here she is, totally exposed, masked, ripped off in front of everybody. And they're trying to trap Jesus. And they say, hey, Jesus, what should we do with her? Are going to stone her? Or are you going to forgive her? And they were trying to trap him because the law said we're, they were supposed to stone her, kill her. And so Jesus a- answered just brilliantly. And he said, okay, let's stone her. But let him who's without sin cast the first stone. And then, and then he kneeled down. I love it. He kneeled down and he just started writing, the Bible says. He just started writing on the sand. And a lot of theologians like to, like to talk about what could he have been writing. I kind of have my own thought about what Jesus was writing there. I believe Jesus was writing the names of the mistresses of all the people in the crowd, holding rocks in their hands. Teresa. Uh-huh. And then and, and Mary, Barbara, and everyone's just like, oh, my gosh, does he, does he know my? Oh, shoot, I'm out. Come on. <laughs> One by one, one by, because one by one, they start leaving. They just, he's just writing as they're writing. And they just, they one by one leave until it's just Jesus and the woman. And he says, lift up your head. And he says, where are your accusers? Where are they? And she looks around. She says, there are none. Look, look this, is, this is what happens when you remove the mask. You need to know this, okay? Because the enemy is lying to you, telling you, keep it on, keep it on. This is what's protecting you. It's, I'm telling you, it's keeping you from the freedom you need. It's keeping you from the healing you need. Jesus responds, and he says, and neither do I accuse you. Don't you just love Jesus for that? Mask ripped off, caught in sin, totally broke. She, she did it. She took the step. She did it. I don't, I don't accuse you. I don't condemn you. No. I love you. Go on. Go. Be free. Go sin. No more. Don't, don't go back to that house. Go sin. No more. See, that's what happens when you take off the mask. And then right after that, Jesus says, and right after that, right after that, John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I didn't come to shout at you. I'm not mad at you. I'm not here to like rip off masks. I'm not here to hurt you, man. I'm not here to slam the gavel on you or to send you to hell. I came to bring you light. And whoever follows me, he said, will never walk in that darkness. You won't have to wear the mask. Whoever will follow me will have the light of life. Friends, that is available for you today. Light. Freedom is available to you today. Come on, let's bow our heads all across this worship center. God, I thank you.